Okay, 15 Evinrud, short shaft, tiller handle, manual shift, pole start only. Beautiful little motor. So, customer provided his fuel tank, and uh, we're going to see what the issue is. The complaint is no idle. So, older two strokes, uh, the don't idle. Eight out of ten times is a uh, carburetor issue. So, got the test tank over here filling up. It looks like a trash can, but it's actually not. It's a test tank. And uh, the difference between a test tank and uh, it's got like two-stroke mix in the bottom of it. And, uh, and it has a drain plug from a kayak. I mean, for a test tank. So... Yep, we're gonna let this fill up. We'll put the motor on it and uh, hook up the fuel and see what's going on. Well, been running for, it was a pretty easy start. Been running for two minutes. I'm probably a little over 100 degrees and I got no water pump. So we'll get it running again. Pull this line off, that's the weep or the piss hose, and uh, see what's going on here. And it is confirmed it does not idle. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of choke, a little bit of a little bit of throttle. No choke. quarter throttle so we're gonna let it run for a second now the water pumps cruising we'll let it cool down and, uh, and then we'll confirm no idle seems to run really well it might be slightly down on power but it does pretty decent the complaint is no idle confirmed so our next trick is in there anytime that a two-stroke doesn't want to idle first approach is fuel because two strokes I mean it's really common so if you're out on the water and this happens where you're not idling first thing that you can do is pull the drain on the carburetor and see what comes out. If it's like milk or a bunch of crud, I mean, you can drain it, put it back in, re-squeeze your primer, and try again. Because something might have just been up against the float and not, not allowing enough fuel. That's first trick when you're out. So next trick, do not turn any adjustment screws. Because if it runs, uh, if it doesn't want to idle, it could be adjustment screw related or it could be a blockage inside where the adjustment screw touches. Don't mess with anything like that. We've got to take the carburetor off, take it apart, figure out what's, clo what's clogging the idle jet. You've got two jets in these carburetors. You've got a main jet and you've got an idle jet. The idle jet only allows fuel when it's idling. Everything else past that is a completely different jet. And I'll show you once we get on the inside there. So first thing first, remove carburetor. One more thing worth mentioning. See this wire? This wire is holding this thing back. And you see this rod? This rod is disconnected. So this has been a problem for a minute and you can tell because of these things. So the whole purpose of this is so that you can't start it in gear 
and so that you can't pull start this in gear or yeah so if you had a twist throttle that was a shift and then throttle and then shift and then throttle that would all be one mechanism and, uh, and so that you couldn't pull start this in gear there's this, this is like a little locking tab that keeps you from pull starting it so when you shift this see that rod move this is so that you don't accidentally start it in gear which could be potentially dangerous if you're a novice and uh, you know you don't want to run people over so the reason that this has been bypassed is because it doesn't idle so you're out on the lake and you need to get going and this thing is just giving you nothing but fits put it in gear wide open throttle pull start and away you go so we're gonna we're gonna contact the customer and determine whether or not we want to put this all back the way it was or leave that up to him because uh, he might prefer this I know I do I go about it a little bit differently but this does work um, bypassing safety is uh, not a terrible idea but it's also something you have to remember so and you wouldn't want to sell it like this if you were going to sell it um, yeah see this little circle cutout right here that's for an electric starter so this option that was an option for this so in order to get this carburetor out what we're going to do is obviously remove the pull start mechanism mechanism that's funny and uh and then pull off the air box and uh there's not an air filter in there is this is just a uh, air diverter so that if water were to splash up in here or get up in here um because of a sinking boat it doesn't immediately suck up water this is just to uh kind of help allow pathways inside of this so that it can kind of help maybe block a bird from getting in there or bees it's kind of a joke um, on the sled this is missing uh, because I uh, have to take my carburetor off constantly because of lovely ethanol fuel um, so yeah first things first this guy which is just this one that one that one and then this whole thing will come off and uh, do not take this off because this is what holds the recoil all together and if uh, you take that off you're going to get a spring that goes crazy we all love that um, I call it Rolexing on you like a Rolex watch you take it apart springs and stuff go everywhere um, so and then we're going to pull the air box and the carburetor pretty straightforward it's just that nut and another one on the other side but you'll be able to access that once this is off
Once you get the carburetor off, look inside there and inspect your reed. So a two-stroke doesn't have intake or exhaust valves, they have ports. Now, and the piston is positioned among those ports at certain particular times of the stroke, and they allow the fuel and exhaust to come in and out. So a reed is supposed to, or is, uh, a way to prevent fuel to enter back to the carburetor. So it's like a one-way valve, and that's inside of there. It's like the, yeah, it's got seals and little doors. That's all it is. And you want to make sure none of the doors are hanging open. Or chunks of plastic inside there. So, now that we got the carburetor off, uh, I did have to take the, uh, the throttle accelerator linkage, this piece, off, which is just held on by a little O-ring, and that's the rod that connects it to the arm on the side here. So I did have to take that off in order to get the back nut off, but you didn't miss much. So we're gonna bring it in here on the bench and tear it apart. So everybody's worried when they're gonna do a carburetor rebuild that it's gonna be this daunting, impossible task where things are gonna be crazy and all over the place and parts are gonna go flying and it's, the people are just, just scared of it. They don't know what they're doing because they've never done it before. The only way to know what you're doing is to do it. Basically, don't tear the de the gaskets. And there is certain things that you can do to prevent that from happening. Um, this gasket here on the back, I've got no reason to remove it. And it's a nice pliable gasket. It's not hard or crunchy, so we're going to leave it alone. And underneath this hat on the top, We've got all these Phillips screws, there's a gasket underneath that, and here at the bowl, there's a gasket underneath that. So you'll notice, there's the sticky crud. It's just nasty sticky crud, and what that is is two-stroke fuel that has seeped or backsplashed out, and it's been sticking on there. And But you can, you can feel it, you can't feel it, but I can feel it, that it's sticky. So, that's to kind of give you an idea of what's kind of going on on the inside. It is sticky. We've got a little label here. Look at that. 1-10-1997 Mexico. That's cool. So we're going to meticulously take this apart very carefully, very slowly, and remember where everything goes. And first things first, we're going to take this out and drain the fuel out of it into my little trough here. That's diesel oil from another project. It's kind of dark in here, but yeah, this is a generator I got uh, from Grandma, and it seized up, and uh, that's kind of a, I could have took a video about that, but I didn't think you guys really cared. Um, basically, it was a diagnosis at this point. I did order a couple parts, um, but the connecting rod to crankshaft relationship was horrendous. The, uh, yeah, the rod bearing disappeared so that's a story for another time right now we need to get this sucker idling so we'll tear this part and uh see what's going on, on the inside okay basically just going to need phillips screwdriver needle nose pliers aerosol straw and your can of favorite carb cleaner brake cleaner starting fluid anything like that definitely not PV blaster, not WD-40. We want brake clean, carb cleaner, starting fluid. One of those. So before we tear this open, we're going to hose it. We're going to spray it down because there's stuff on the outside that we don't want on the inside. So I'm just going to do this off camera real quick. Just randomly crazy. Hose it down. Next trick, wipe it down. Just gonna take a rag here. Just gonna give it a little bit of a little bit of a wipe down. That's all. Wipe the blade. Wipe in here a little bit. We just don't want anything super gross getting 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 on the inside. So 
Our problem is not going to be up top, but it's off, so you better look. Pretty straightforward. Remove the screws. If the screws are stuck, then uh, there is a tool that you'll need in order to get the screws out, and it's called an impact driver. And no, not an electric screw gun type impact driver, like a 1920s kind of impact driver. It's basically a screwdriver, and when you hammer down on it, it forces a rotation. So, if you don't have one, your grandpa has one. So, basically, you'll have to hammer the, uh, you can Google that. We won't get into that. So, carefully... I'm going to just apply a little bit of pressure. Do not break this. And it's stuck. It's stuck. See this gasket? So I want to take this gasket off now so that I can get a better angle at it. So I'm going to take one of these and get underneath it and just ever so gently intact. Okay. Gonna need a gonna need a pry tool, flat blade screwdriver, something like that. Man, she's really on there. There she goes. Gently. Okay, so you get, see the gasket is partially attached to the top and the bottom. See that? So I'm going to get my razor blade. And I'm just going to kind of work that gasket just a little bit. Just give it a little bit of pry as I go. There it goes. Okay. So in here, we're just checking these orifices for anything peculiar. I don't see anything strange. But since we're here... Hose it down. Stick your straw in every little pocket and just spray any. See how fluid's coming out of that spot? We want to make sure all these passages are clear. Okay, so. This is rubber. We'll be really nice to this. We're actually going to leave it alone. It's just worth looking. The problem's not in there. The problem is on the bottom. So, you'll spray inside all of these passages as well. But, not yet. Our next trick is to get the bottom off. So, let me go grab a flat blade. We're, we need to take this. Well, maybe I, I got it here. So this is the drain that I mentioned earlier to drain the bowl. The bowl is the bottom of the carburetor here. So we know all these screws go with that piece. We'll kind of keep them separated. Got to keep them separated. And now I'm just going to drain the carburetor. That's it. Now flip her over. Now we're going to take off the bowl. The bowl is where the float and all the jets and all the good stuff is at. That's 
it's where the bottom, you know, in the bottom, I mean, you got gravity and it's where the fuel enters first. And that's, uh, that's where all the gunk builds up. Is it not a particular order how this comes apart? You know, you could take the bottom off first or not even take the top off if you don't want. Not that you can see what I'm doing, but I'm just pulling these screws. Feel free to fast forward. I'm not going to speed this up. Okay. Same story right here. We're just going to be real gentle. Almost broke my knife. I found this knife on the bank of the river last summer. Threw it in, in the shed here because I was like, yeah, you know. Better have a knife and not need it than to need a knife and not have it. So, we're just being real gentle. There she goes. Okay. Same trick. We don't want to tear any gaskets. We're just going to be real gentle. Just work it around until the gasket lifts. These things are made to be serviceable. I mean, especially the original gaskets, which, the, which is what this is. I mean, it's basically rubber. So if you look inside of here, it is spickety span clean. We've got a little tiny bit of debris in the bottom, but nothing crazy. We've got a definite no idle situation though. And we're about to figure that out. So this is the float. Okay. Underneath the float is a needle goes into this brass looking thing here. See that? Look right here. That's a needle that lifts. So imagine the carburetor being like this. When fuel enter enters into the bowl here, no fuel, fuel. It floats up because of fuel, which stops this. When you use fuel throughout the carburetor, you know, when you're accelerating, it lowers down a little bit because the bowl is less full and allows fuel to enter through this passage here. In order to get this out, there's a pin right here. So what we have to do is remove that pin. I have spare pins laying around, so sometimes these do break. But we're gonna try not to break this one. And I'm gonna take my straw and we're gonna push on it right here that's all it took remove the pin and then lift straight out and that's gonna take off the float and this needle so here's the needle here's the float put the float right here we're gonna inspect the tip of this needle just gonna look at it real carefully. We got a little bit of a black ring around it, but what, we're, what we don't want to see is it missing or a big chunk out of it. Okay, I gotta eat a sandwich. Okay, that was good. This is my rod lathe. This is a. Uh, mechanism out of a cd drive for a computer that so this is like the side of the track and this is what drives the cd drive in and out i took this apart and it just takes 12 volts and it spins real slow and i can i can return uh eyes on fishing poles yeah 
So, yeah, back at it. But this is this is what my my camera's sitting on. Cool, huh? Okay. So, let's go over some anatomy real quick. Oh, I wanted to finish talking about this. The uh, the needle here. If this rubber piece on the end is damaged, meaning it's got like a big chunk missing out of it, or if the tip is worn off, or if the rubber's missing entirely, which does happen, this will be a uh, rich condition. So, inside of here, it's pretty simple. This is your main jet. And this is your idle jet. Your carburetor might be a little bit different, and it might have an idle jet here instead of here, or it might have a main jet here and an idle jet right next to it. Either way, the big one is the main jet. The little one is the idle jet. So our problem is going to be right here. So yeah, so fuel goes up inside of here from here and it goes through some venturies some little orifices and stuff and then gets drawn in through the idle jet so all we have to do at this point you don't even need to know how this works it doesn't that's not necessarily going to help you all you got to do at this point is clean these passages so it would be best to take this out and you might not get it out Sometimes these are just flat out stuck. Don't destroy it. Because um, they're brass and they can be pretty fragile. Um, if you can't get it out, just leave it there. And force brake clean or carb clean through that with your straw. So you're basically just going to be putting your straw up against it. Watch your eyeballs and spray the hell out of it. So I'm going to try to get it out. Because kind of an old school habit of mine is I'd like to see through the jet. I can see through the main jet. You can't, but I can. I can see a little bit of light through that. But I'd like to take the jet out and I like to look through it. So I need to find a little flat blade screwdriver that is just right. It's going to fit this perfectly. That might take me a second. Okay, check this out. This is a Dollar Tree Multi Screwdriver. I put a rubber band on it because the latch sucks. But you should throw one of these in your boat. You should go to Dollar Tree and buy one of these and put it in your boat. Everybody needs an ammo can in their boat full of tools. So inside of here we've got just some little sockets and whatnot. So as cheap and crappy as this may be, I mean it was literally a dollar. So. This is worth keeping around. And the flat blade screwdriver is just the right size to take this jet out. Real gently. If it doesn't want to come, don't force it. Because what I've seen before is, hey, I just rebuilt my carburetor and it doesn't freaking run anymore. And what happened was they were trying to turn this out and a little chunk of brass broke off and blocked the jet. So... I'm going to look through here. I doubt you can focus, but it is clear. So, all we're going to do at this point, I'm going to spray a little bit in the hole and I'm going to put it back in. And then I'm going to go through. At this point, the carburetor is pretty much completely disassembled. You can't really get it further apart than this other than pulling the blade off. And that blade off totally unnecessary so this is your throttle blade this is your choke blade so only thing you can do at this point is spray the guts out of it every single little orifice and uh, make sure it's clear another option is uh, compressed air um, that is a viable option. Depends on how clogged up it is. I mean, usually just forcing, just the aerosol pressure from that can should clear any blockage, but com compressed air does work really well. You wanna be careful doing that though. 
Um, make sure your carburetor is completely disassembled. You don't have any sort of diaphragms or rubber pieces in there when you do that because you'll just destroy them. You'll, you'll blow them apart. And, uh, and sometimes, uh, don't want to over tighten that. Sometimes a little, uh, hey, what are you doing? Hi, Bubba. You gonna fix that for me? You gonna fix that for me? What do you smell? What do you smell? Okay, he's checking things out. Okay, so we're basically gonna spray out every orifice and uh, make sure it's spick spickety span clean and uh, maybe do the compressed air thing and uh, put it back together, put it on. Okay, I blew it all out with compressed air. Now, it's just a matter of putting it back together. So assemble your needle on your float. It's just a little clip. Drop it down in there. The pin, just reverse order. Make sure this is good. Nice and dry. Never ever use any sort of gasket sealant on carburetors because that gasket sealant will ooze out or squish too far and create debris. And make sure you start all your screws before you start tightening anything very tight. Now, a novice mechanic will, uh, will ask how tight is tight. And the legendary Mr. Castle would say the specification for that is tight but not broken. So that's what we'll do. Just a little snug, snug, keep things from cracking. We're going to skip over a couple holes, snug snug basically the same tightness it was that you took it off so it will go on hey <laughs> corona there we go okay that's that now since my carpet's dirty another little spray wipe this down we see some blue stuff right here that's loctite Love Loctite. Okay, bottom half's back together. Now we're gonna do the top half. Now before we put the top half on, there is something else we need to do. This is your idle mixture. So, this is in there, a certain specification, okay? We're not gonna mess with that just yet. We don't wanna turn any of these screws because this carburetor hasn't really been messed with, I think. We'll know once we get the thing running. But what we want to do is take this out and clean behind it. Take this out and clean behind it. So how you do that is you take your flathead screwdriver and you're going to tighten this. So we're going to go half. One, half, that makes two, two and a quarter, two and a half, that makes three, three and a quarter, three and a half is tight. And when I say tight, I mean just barely snug. So that's three turns in. Okay, so we're gonna take this all the way out. Now when we go to put this back in, we'll just put it all the way in till it's snug and then exactly three turns out. And then you'll be right back where you were. If you've lost track of where that's supposed to be, then uh, I'd start with two turns. So this is a metering needle. 
So you can see that it goes in here and blocks a passage. And when it's out just far enough, because this needle is tapered, it allows air or fuel to uh, go around it. Now, on a two-stroke, the idle screw is adjusting fuel, and on a four-stroke, the idle screw is adjusting air. Keep that in mind. So, this one, same trick. This is just a plug, though. You don't need to count the threads on this or nothing. We're just going to take this one out. By the way, this uh, Dollar Tree screwdriver, the handle turns on the shaft, so it's a complete pile of shit. So, maybe drill a hole through here, all the way through the shank, and then pin it with a nail. That would probably be good. I just bought it because it was there. And I was like, hey, I'll throw that in the boat. We're going to take this guy all the way out. Yep, beautiful. Now, clean these orifices. Just going to spray them out with brake clean. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm just going through, flushing holes out. Forming an enema. Okay, flushed all the holes out. Now I'm going to take compressed air and I'm going to blow it in all the holes. That's ready to go back on. So, put this plug back in. Pretty straightforward. Snug. And if you remember correctly, we had three turns here. We just got to run this all the way in, then all the, then three turns out. Get a feel for it. That's it. So here we go. That's half. It's one, one and a half, two, two and a half three on the money okay and then knowing that we're gonna put this back on and then we're gonna put all these screws in and then we're gonna go put it back on the boat or back on the motor and uh, and then we're gonna fire it up I'm sure you don't need to watch that it's just a matter of uh, reassembly easy peasy so we're gonna put all this back together and we're going to put it back on the boat and we're going to see what happens. Okay, all back together. Carburetor is in. Airbox on. Recoil on. We're going to leave his safety bypass. Got the fuel line hooked up. Carburetor's full. Crank all the way down. There you go. So even though we didn't find any large obstructions in the carburetor, that's all it took. I mean, sometimes it could be the smallest little grain of sand that's gonna cause an idle issue. And it just died. So, might need a little bit of tuning. A little bit of tuning, but We'll, uh, we'll play with it a little bit longer and see if we can't get it. So, a little bit of choke. A little bit of throttle. Choke off.
Okay. So, it runs pretty good at idle, but it did die after a second. So this adjustment here, we're gonna back this out half a turn. See that? Died. I'm gonna go back to where it was, get it running again, and we'll try half a turn the other direction. like that either okay we'll go but it didn't die immediately so we're gonna go quarter turn just a little bit of finickiness could be a fuel condition too don't know so that's at a quarter turn tight. It is idling. Previously, before we messed with the carburetor, it uh, wouldn't idle at all. And now we're only idling for about 10 seconds. So we either have a mixture issue or we have a fuel quality issue. Or might have something to do with these crusty spark plugs. So. I honestly think that the tuning is very close and we shouldn't really have an issue. So I'm going to probably pull a spark plug and make sure, make sure these are in good condition and, uh, and then go from there. Yeah. Not all that great. They look old. Looks like it's been running a little fat. So, NGK V7HS to the zone. Well, there you have it, folks. She's done, fixed, 100%, ready to hit the water. Yep. So, it was idling for 30 seconds or so, and then it would die. And it was just a little bit of messing with that screw. Didn't take much. And uh, now she's good to go. Customer can come pick it up. And I'm on to the next one. Thanks for watching. And I hope this helps with your idle issues. And uh, don't forget to subscribe because here coming up, I've got a secret weapon back here that I've been saving. I've got a... Uh, late 70s mercury 80 right here that i've been toying with here and there it looks like it's in jambles right now but it's actually in really good shape um, i've gone through the whole thing and it's pretty well ready to go got a little bit of a lower unit issue um, the shift fork uh, it's stuck in reverse um, but it happened during disassembly so i think the thing got flipped over so We'll have to tear into that lower unit in order to figure out what's going on and look at that still idling and as far as the uh other lower unit that one uh from the last video that you guys watched there it will sit um until the customer decides that he wants to take it home um but it's basically right now just a pile of garbage there's really nothing savable besides the prop so one of those things that just sits on the shelf until he either finds a replacement motor or replacement lower unit and then he can take it home and put it on his own shelf. But until then, no big deal. This sucker right here, 15 horses. She's ready to go. We'll test it forward so you're idle. Forward. Neutral. Reverse. Ready to rip. So, yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, nope. 
no big secret. I put new plugs in it. And uh, and yeah, she's ready to go. Next time, uh, I hope we find one that's a little more challenging uh, that you guys will enjoy. But this one's pretty straightforward. Clean the carb. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below. Later.